So yesterday, you packed your uh, packed your bags and you left Germany. Yes, I did. Back to Ibiza for another another season. Yes, for the next seven eight months. How did it feel yesterday, leaving Germany and? Actually, it was raining. I was like, yes, it's about time. <laughs> but the weekend before, I was in Korea and Japan, so I'm a little bit jet lagged. And but I'm happy to be here. Happy to see you here and all Absolutely. of you. Oh, it's uh, an absolute honour to have you here. We've. Uh, We've had Sven, um, sorry, Nara Rogers and Jean-Michel Jarre, kind of true sort of icons of, of, of a different kind of electronic music, but uh, we've always wanted to have Sven as a keynote at IMS. It took a few years to get you here, mm -hmm. but um, it's a real pleasure, and obviously tonight you're going to close, close Dolt Villa. Um, but look, Ibiza, you know, Ibiza is going to be a big topic for us here. Um, to me, you know, people talk about the British guys who came to this island and and took Ibiza culture and Ibiza music back to the UK and exploded dance music, but you were kicking around Ibiza in the early 80s, right? Uh, 1980, exactly, it was 1980, it was my first time in Ibiza. And t tell us a little about, you know, I didn't come till 93, so I'd love to know what, what the island was like at that point on a musical level. And well, I hitchhiked when I was 16 from Frankfurt to Barcelona, and then I dropped the coin and coin said, Sven, go to Ibiza, and then I I uh, took the ferry, come to Ibiza, I stayed here for three months. I was sleeping in the pinion forest. Uh, I stole a sun chair and uh, slept on the sun chair for three months. And um, yes, and I uh, experienced something which was so unbelievable and um, full of love and, and good music and hippiness in the air, clubs with no roof, amnesia, cool. Glorious, Pacha, and there were the DJs, Pipi, Cesar, Alfredo were playing. Even in 1980? Yes, and I was very inspired by the, by the sound they played, from Pink Floyd to African uh, deep percussion music, reggae, and of course Italo disco. Yeah. That was the music of the 80s here. And what, what was it when you flicked the coin? Why was Ibiza even an option? What did you know about the place? Yeah, people were talking about it in Germany, especially in the scene I was in, in Wiesbaden. And um, so they made me really curious. And I didn't say even goodbye to my mum. I said, I'm leaving home, and I don't right. know when I'm coming back. How, how old were you at this point? 16. Wow. Yeah. And um, well, and this was my, my big inspiration. And I came back home. Uh, after three months, and I was telling my mom all about this, and then she said to me, "Why don't you want? Why don't you want to become a DJ?" And I said, "What?" <laughs> and my parents had a club, and then I started as a DJ and when I was 16 in my parents' club. Right. And from yeah, from then on, every year I came here to Ibiza for the opening parties and the closing parties. Right. And my biggest goal was, my biggest uh, motivation was that one of the DJs playing my records. And so I started um, with a little home recording studio, um, producing my very first track. It was right. 1984. Wow. And in uh, 1985, I came to Ibiza and was handing out my record to Pipi, Cesar, and Alfredo. Can you please play? <laughs> how, did, how did you sort of interrogate that world of DJs? I mean, you were there as a, as a party person, as a clubber. Did you um, hang around the decks to try and talk to them? How did you make connections with those guys? Well, I think I was the wildest one on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's and changed there, Sven. No, I know, and that's, um, I am coming from the dance floor, and I'm still a hardcore raver, I think, yeah. still, if the music is good. Huh. And um, while I was climbing up, uh, you know, uh, the walls and the palm trees and uh, amnesia when Alfredo was playing, and this was, something really special. They were handing out this mescaline bowl uh, on the entrance. And yeah. <laughs> it was Grace Jones on the dance floor, Duran Duran, Paul, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and I'm wow. as a teenager in the middle yeah. dancing. And Alfredo did a very good job, I have to say, in this time. It was, he was the, the guru uh, of the Ibiza sound at that time. When, you, when you're playing in, in Amnesia now, do you ever think about those moments when mm -hmm. you're actually in the club or when you're performing? Or? Of course, of course I do. Well, it's uh, yeah, more than 30 years ago. Mm. And um, 
yeah, things have changed a lot in, 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 in all these years, but I'm really happy to, to become a, a resident at Malaysia with my own night, which was uh, started in 1999. Yeah. And that was for me, uh, yeah, my, my dream came true. Yeah. So from, from that point of, of discovery and up until 99, you know, what was the turning point for you wanting to do a night in Ibiza? I mean, techno music, underground music, really, when I first came here in the 93, 94, 95, there was no place for the music, the electronic music that I really loved. You couldn't really hear it on the island really until DC-10 and, and you came along with Cocoon. What was, the, what was the reason for wanting to do it? and How hard was it to get it off the ground? Well, I was really, um, in the 80s, it was a different time here in Ibiza. In the 90s, when all the big English club promoter came on the island and they changed this music and kicked out the Spanish DJs. And um, yeah, and then trance music and the real commercial, uh, let's say, house music became so popular here. Um, I was like, I, I didn't felt the, the, the vibe anymore from, from my Ibiza, yeah. Yeah. and um, it, it, it turned into much more a, a business and, and, and big nights, big logos, mm. big brands. Yeah. Well, and I felt so sorry and I said, well, I have to change something here and um, I'm going to offer, uh, you know, Amnesia. Um, a residency and, yeah. and, and uh, <laughs> I wanted to do something I wanted to bring back the feeling I had when I was yeah. when I came to Ibiza especially on the dance floor and yes and it was I was taking this uh, opportunity um, Martin uh, Junior son of Martin Farrer yeah. actually he was uh, at that time already a fan of mine and he booked me for um, some one-off shows at Amnesia and he was asking me then if I want to become uh, a resident with my own night. And I said, yeah, and what, what kind of mm. day? Mm. They said, take the Monday. I said, the Monday? Yeah, because Monday is closed. Said, yeah. Yes, I take the Monday. Yeah. And there was <laughs> Manu Mission was uh, right. at that time at uh, Privilege. And uh, so I said, that's, that's perfect. No competition. I start from zero and build it up. Yeah. So what happened on the, the first night of Cocoon? Tell us about the first ever night of Cocoon. Actually, I remember I invited a lot of, uh, a lot of friends from, from Germany, and we were all so nervous. And I, uh, I think we had about 1,200 people right. at the Good. first opening. Yeah. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And um, uh, it, was, it was so special. The, opening my own night in the place where I was, you know, hanging when I was 16. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so this was for me something very special. And I felt like, yeah, there is space for me and I can, I can let my fantasy, you know, flow here and, and build something up. And um, of course, uh, we already did our first little after hours that time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, which was always uh, a part of Cocoon, uh, the after hours, um, free after hours, and you know, just to carry on and, yeah. and having a good time with, your, with the core of your, of, your, of your party people. And yeah, then the first three, four years were quite tough for me because I had to invest a lot of money because um, Cocoon is not just a, a DJ-driven night, it's a full production. Um, we have um, 40 people working for us in the season, and we do everything by our own. And, <coughs> and that means, um, yeah, that means um, an investment. Um, I had some help in the beginning from the, uh, in the first three years from the Deutsche uh, Telekom, T-Mobile. Yeah. They were supporting us, which was good for us. Yeah. Uh, they were helping us. And, and then, yeah, but then suddenly, yeah, techno arrived in Ibiza. Yeah. And uh, Ricardo Villalobos did a very good job on the terrace. Mm. And so then, year by year, step by step, it was growing. Going, going back to those, those early years, I remember coming, I think it was either year one or year two, and you were always a flamboyant artist and performer, and going back to you know, the Omen and seeing you perform in those places. But I'd never seen behavior like it from a DJ when I saw what you were doing up on the VIP balcony and bringing champagne down to the dance floor and to the, to the VIPs. It was a, 
pretty spectacular behavior from you there. Where, where does all this come from, from you as a, as a person? And well, I'm probably still on, yeah. yeah. Um, I like to entertain, first of all, and, and I like to invite the people in, into the night, to, into a, um, a big uh, excess uh, on the dance floor. And I feel a, a lot of passion for it, and I'm, I'm still, you know, enjoying it so much uh, from, you know, sharing, you know, sharing your feelings you have with, yeah. the, with, the, with your crowd. It is probably also the, the reason why I'm not giving up playing uh, all night long and another 12 hours on the after hour, yeah. <laughs> which is uh, a bit crazy here and there, but I'm just enjoying it. Um, yeah. A 20 hour set in Ibiza for me is normal. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, I re really enjoy it. I'm, I'm the only one who comes with four cases of records. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, uh, yeah, just, uh, just yeah. no more thinking, just playing and grab the record. It's, it's, what is, I love it. What is the longest time you've ever played? I did not count it, but uh, <laughs> I think uh, over 30 hours probably. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow, incredible, incredible. <laughs> um, I mean, that, that kind of that, that flamboyancy and that kind of culture that you created around Cocoon, you, you were creating a lifestyle around what you were doing. You know, we were the first really to do that on the island with, with underground music. And, um, but obviously now the VIP side of this island has fast-tracked beyond anybody's belief, really. Um, something that you and me have talked about over the years. You know, what's your, what's your feeling now about how the island has been taken down this path in such a, such a big way? Well, when we started our <laughs> VIP, and which is not, uh, the VIP in, um, in, in the major is not too big, but uh, and also it's very separate. It's, it's high on, on, the gal uh, on, the, on the balcony. Uh, our VIP was always empty. <laughs> there was no VIP, you know. <laughs> there was this, the first, the first uh, three, four years, there was maybe one or two tables uh, with some people who enjoyed a bottle of champagne with, with their friends, which is you know, fair enough, why not? Mm. Uh, but then after all these years and, and the success of Ibiza, the club music here, and, and now suddenly you could see that um, yeah, more and more VIPs are VIPs, I mean, who is really important? Yeah? I mean, they, they're coming because they have money and, and, and uh, booking uh, big tables and, and well, I don't mind, to be honest, but for me, the, the party is the dance floor. Mm. And I make the music, my music is for the dance floor. Yeah. And um, uh, the direction was, was all, I mean, in also at Pasha. Yeah. If you see Pasha, I, I, I've been in Pasha in the 80s, and I could see after all these years, the VIP uh, section was growing, was growing. Bad, yeah. The dance floor was shrinking. Uh, and um, yeah, I was, uh, I was wondering if this is really the right direction. Yeah. And um, my people on the dance floor, they always supported us and, and, and I'm very thankful and uh, for my fans that they are coming year by year and, and they're the ones who pay an entrance fee and, and, and they want to have a good party. And, and, and I don't like to see that uh, uh, VIPs now um, making, um, starting with their own opinions, who, are, who is uh, opinions about the DJs they're listening and saying this DJ is not good. Next time we want to come and yeah. please change the music. And I paid thousands of uh, euros for the table, and and all this energy is yeah. is uh, well, I don't like it uh, honestly. Yeah. But you, I mean, you find in the the, the <coughs> Ibiza club owners are being led by the VIPs right now in, in certain. Yeah. Talking about money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing you know, five, ten years ago when the VIPs were coming and P A P Diddy and those people were coming, they were obsessed with the David Getters of this world, and it didn't really sort of affect the underground world so much. But now they've kind of left that sound behind and are now completely obsessed with, with you and Marco Carolla and Luciano and people like that. What's your, what's your feeling about that? Well, of course, they also have new generations, people, younger, younger people with a lot of money and coming and showing off and, okay, they all can also be, they are also fans, yeah, but um, it should be always in, in balance yeah, and, and in 
just hearing these rumors as a new club opening is only about VIPs. Yeah. So, I mean, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the wrong signal for Ibiza. Yeah. Ibiza was never about e uh, VIPs, and it was a kind of, I love this hippie feeling here and this free spirit and uh, no, no barriers between rich and, and, yeah. and middle class, low class. And I mean, when, when we partied here after the clubs, after the amnesia, we had always the, our after hours, as I mentioned before, and, and this was something Cocoon somehow, I think we invented here, the after hour culture, mm. doing illegal parties on the beach, and, uh, and Campo and, yeah. and countryside, and we always risked, you know, to have to tr get in trouble with the police and this thing, but we didn't care, you know, we were, yeah. and we, I am a hippie in a way, uh, yeah. and uh, I love that. When I'm listening uh, to some people today and uh, telling me that there are some uh, VIP uh, throwing after hours and they pay the DJs uh, for the after hours, I mean, come on, what's that, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's so, that's uh, for me, it doesn't feel so good. But I'm not involved, you know, in, in this. And uh, we want to show this year again with Cocoon what, what we're standing for quality parties, good DJ sets, and good after hours. Yeah. Do you, do you, have you still got your sort of personal, private, hippie ish Ibiza? Have you still got your little secret places that you go to reconnect? Of course. Can you tell us where they are? No. <laughs> <laughs> My place is no. <laughs> I think probably the most of the people know the places anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but you know, your, your special Ibiza that was your inspiration, yeah. um, you know, you must feel slightly, you know, I know you are, you're very protective over this island. You know, you've, uh, we've talked about it a lot over the years. You, you care more about this place than most of the DJs that come here and take the money and, and leave, you know. And, and um, I just, you know, curious for you to see where you see the, the future direction is for this place. Where, you know, are you, do you have hope for the future for Ibiza? Yeah, I hope that the people who are here for long and, and, and also some of my friends and colleagues, they already live here. And as I can see like a, a trend that more and more DJs come over here and they want to live here with their families and, and, and stay here. Yeah. And I think because of that, they're also going to more be more protective because we don't want to be Miami you know and and, and what you all all these these big things the big business you're talking about here you know yeah. I mean this is was not never really the, the our motivation here you know this is why Ibiza is Ibiza you know? it's still a pirate island you know? and now all the big boys coming yeah. and um, well yeah I mean, I'm happy that our music is successful worldwide and everybody's talking about it and jumping on it and and and. But um, we have to take care. Yeah. I think so, yeah. And how do, you, how do you feel about this season coming up, the changes this season? There's been you know, more, more people setting up their own nights around, around us. Um, you know, new venues opening, Ushuaia going to the next level. What's your sort of feeling for the summer ahead? Well, Honestly, I think it's, it's too much of everything. Uh, I don't know who will pay all these fees and, and uh, entrance fees. I mean, South, Southern Europe is facing a really bad time, especially for the young people. And uh, you, you, we bring with all these events, I think we, we, we're bringing the, our crowd in a difficult situation because now they have to, they have to, have to make decisions and choose where to go and maybe they go for the free tickets and not uh, for the entrance fee and which is uh, understandable and uh, the, because the uh, drink prices here is, is also over the top yeah. and so um, you know our our crowd is from Italy from Spain and of course from all over Europe but Spain Italy is uh, quite important uh, is in our important crowd, and I think we now we have to take care of them, you know. Mm. And um, with all these different nights now, you can choose techno and house music. Uh, you find it uh, three or four times in the night now. Yeah. It's four. Oh, it's going to be. I mean, observing the season, we are having a very strong lineup, a very yeah. good lineup, 
and um, Amnesia has changed a few things. The DJ booth is now in the main room. It's, it's on down the on the floor like it used to be, yeah. and which is very good, to, you know, especially for me as a performer. I can jump now. <laughs> 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 and uh, well, yeah, we will see yeah, who will survive. And Luciano is coming back for some days. Yes, with you. yes, and I'm very tell happy us, about tell this. Tell us how that what that means to you to have him back there. And I mean, uh, somehow they're all coming back, and yeah. and that feels good. Cocoon is their home. This is where all they started, and um, so uh, I really welcomed uh, Luciano, and we had a very nice conversation last year at the beach, and um, yeah, I said you're welcome, Luciano. How do you how do you like your Papa Sven tag? You know. You as the sort of father figure to this to this scene of, of DJs. I was always laughing about it, um, but uh, today I think it is it, it's um, some somehow it puts a lot of uh, uh, pressure on my shoulders because I I feel like somehow I'm very responsible for the scene for the younger generation and um, um, educational. I have to I have to talk with them. Mm -hmm. Especially about drugs and 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 how they party, and uh, I want to show them, you know, and talk to them. Is that conversations you have with them? Oh, uh, from yes, if I see some some ugly things in the club and and on our parties, I, I talk to the people. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, I mean, for me and and and, and, and for all of us, is we're doing it because we want to have fun, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't want to destroy our, our, ourselves. And um, um, my music is absolutely positive, mm. full of love and good energy. Yeah. And, and, and uh, can be moody, can be dark, but the message is uh, good laune, you know? That means uh, uh, good vibes, and, 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 and this is what I'm standing for. Yeah. 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 And so if they call me Papa, then the papa is <laughs> putting out the finger. <laughs> but surely everybody's looking at you going, look at papa, the guy's the guy <laughs> leading by example. <laughs> you're, you're partying. Um, I wanted to uh, take you back a little bit to, to your earlier years. And, um, you know, music, music production was a massive part of your life and your career. I mean, you were, you were a pop star at one point, which yeah. a lot of people don't know about. Can you tell us a little bit about that, that part of your life? Yeah, well, this was going back in the 80s when I became a pop star uh, after I had my big hits here in Ibiza, 85, 86, 87, which was Electrica Salsa, which was number one hit in South Europe, in Germany, and not in England, and uh, in Brazil and in South America. And this was all because of... Pardon? I have one copy. <laughs> you have one copy. <laughs> That's good. I sold one million. <laughs> but this was 87. Yeah, and then, you know, I was in this industry and uh, actually I became very tired of it yeah, because I felt like this is what is happening today with all these huge, big, um, um, big uh, industry uh, con concert uh, agency they want to buy it, it's all a little good brands and 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 that time was the major companies they yeah. were they were in charge of you know picking the artists and let them sign heavy contracts yeah. actually i was uh, really pissed about that then after uh, releasing two albums on bmg areola and uh, so i decided to go back to the underground this was in the year of 1988 89 when i opened my very first techno club yeah. In the year of in my age, I was 24, a club called Omen, and then I started to, um, yeah, to do proper techno, mm. 1988, 89, and um, then I decided to start with a solo yeah. career, and um, I released the first album was called Barbarella on, on, on my label IQ Records. Yeah. And then I was um, doing another label called Hard House Record and an ambient label called Recycle or Die. Yeah. And the second album was Accident in Paradise, which was a huge success suddenly. Yeah. 
I was signed on Warner Brothers, and I signed a four, a four album uh, a contract. So I had to do this. Yeah. yeah. So I had this pressure going into the studio and produce, 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 which I enjoy uh, because I had always very talented mu musicians I was working with. And then um, after the Warner Brothers, um, when the contract was uh, finished uh, at the end, I did another album and then suddenly Virgin Record came and said, we want to sign you. And I signed another big contract uh, for another uh, three albums. Right. Yeah, and then um, after that, I said, I don't want to sign any contract anymore. And, um, and I started with my own company, Cocoon. And um, with my label, Cocoon Recordings, a Cocoon agency, a booking agency, events. And then I felt like I have everything in my own hand now, and I decide when I'm going to release a record or not. Yeah. And I didn't feel this pressure anymore. Do you, do you think you will, have, will return to the studio to make the kind of music maybe you used to do? I mean, tracks like es Lesperanza is one of, the, one of the most beautiful electronic records ever made, and you clearly had a great skill for this. What, what's holding you back from going back to... Well, actually, this uh, Cocoon, my, my company, was... Uh, I was very... After all this I've experienced, I, I was concentrating uh, into how I structure my company. And um, I wanted to invite always young talents to support them, creating the perfect platforms for our music. Label, agency, booking agency, events. So I wanted to take care of the whole thing. And this was, yeah, this was uh, yeah, the last couple of years I uh, invested a lot of my time into my structure. And of course, into my DJing. Yeah. Yeah. And this is still my, I have um, the most passion for is DJing and dancing. So you don't think you'll go back to the studio? I will one day. I, I would love to make an ambient album. Yeah. Maybe with uh, Roman Flügel or with DJ Kotze. Yeah. We talked about it, but we will see. I have no pressure. Yeah. 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 I mean, talking about the, um, you know, the explosion of electronic music currently around the world, you know, you living in Germany in, in the 90s, you know, Germany had a, a huge explosion. You, know, you were very central to the rave scene in Germany, and, and then Camel Air Rave turned up, and Camel got involved, and the scene exploded for a period and imploded. You know, what's, your, what's your take on what's happening right now around the world and, and the, sort of the dangers of the hype and the hysteria that's happening for this music? Well, the, the hype was always there. <clears throat> As you said, the coming and going, and it was, always in, it was always in a wave. But I think it's because since uh, America has this new EDM uh, music uh, genre, and uh, the younger generation is jumping on electronic music rather than on rock or hip hop, yeah. um, that this, um, yes, it's a huge market. Mm -hmm. And um, now, of course, and as we were hearing here and, and people talking, there's a lot of big festivals going on in, in the States. And of course, they also want to invite people from Europe and, and um, techno and house artists and so on. Well, we will see, but um, you know, we always had these waves coming and going and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not so impressed by this. Um, I think, um, our, our club culture here in Europe is quite solid and, and we have always uh, special, special peaks yeah. in, 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 in the century of, you know, house and techno, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, yeah, so uh, new influences and, and new sounds are always welcomed, but this, uh, this big hype and, and this, this is going to change our scene, and this and that, I don't think so, mm. uh, as long as I'm here, I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you, are you feeling the benefits of what's happening in America? Do you feel that the, your sound has got the potential now to, to grow in America? Are you that concerned about that? Or? We will see, actually. 
I was touring 10 years in America, yeah, the whole in the, in the 90s. Yeah. And I was playing in so many different cities and nothing has changed, you know. It, there was a little, a little cell in Detroit, a little cell uh, in Chicago, in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Miami, and, uh, and so on. And I, that was the time when also Detroit techno and Chicago house was huge. But it wasn't so huge in America, it was huge in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I was so, I was always wondering why does not, why does not the whole music, what comes out of America, yeah. is not taking off in America? Mm. Yeah. It was always my big question. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, because I think the main thing, it, 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 it has to be, it has to have something what, what people, um, it, in America they want to sell things. Yeah. yeah, and you have to have someone in standing. They need stars. They need uh, um, hook lines. Yeah, they need big themes. Mm. Yeah, and our music, uh, yeah, we call it underground, and it was not happening in the radio station. It was not happening. Uh, it was actually not happening. Yeah, and and now what ha happens now is it is it's it's because of Facebook and 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 all the, the networks they have today, they promote the music on different channels. And, and there's a hysteria about this in the moment. Yeah. But, I mean, this is, we talk about a younger generation. They, I just come back from Japan and, and they were saying, the, uh, in, 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 in Osaka, in Kyoto, you can't dance anymore. They have this anti-dance law. In Japan, um, in Tokyo, they have this new law: you can't go into the club uh, under 20. Yeah, and um, yeah, this uh, this is a difficult situation. So those people they dance on other events. Uh, I think in America is a bit the same, right? Yeah. They're going now into these big festivals where they can go to with no like, no drinking, yeah. and the club scene is uh, is uh, for those who are 21 and over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, you can also go in the clubs, but then no alcohol, they don't have any alcohol license. Yeah, yeah so that is, um, that's the thing. I think um, um, the younger, younger generation, they, they, they're checking now their own channels, yeah. how they can go through and how they... Do you, do you feel, I mean, do you feel you're, you're very well connected to this next generation of, of youth that are coming through? I mean, techno music is bigger than it's ever been in Europe, so clearly something is connecting. With you. Well, I see young people on the dance floor when I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a compliment yeah, in, our, in our days. And uh, yeah. they have a lot of followers on my Facebook site. And, and, and yes, yeah. I, al I always like to have the, the, the mix, yeah. especially in Ibiza. You have people over, over 50 uh, uh, having a good time on, yeah. with dance music and, and mixed with people who are 18, 19, 20, 30, wh whatever. Yeah. And that was for me always, this, was, this is Ibiza, special people. Yeah. And, 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 and um, I hope it, 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 you know, it would stay like this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you feel with the, the current um, age, age of DJing? And you, know, you guys have been doing this for a long, long time. Um, can you imagine a point where you'll ever get tired of DJing? You seem to have more energy than ever. And Honestly, no. Um, it's my life, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, yeah. it I mean, for me, it's, 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 it's okay. going out every weekend to a record store, buying records, and having new records in your hand, and playing in them. It's, it's, I, feel st I still have this feeling like 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I would, I would be very bored if I sit in front of my computer and download music, and then yeah. decide, hmm, should I play it or should I not? <laughs> And I like to go to the record store and talk with people. What do you like this record? And you know, check out the cover. Uh, and and you know, it's. I mean, I, I know it's very rare. I'm probably the dinosaur here, and <laughs> and uh, the vinyl dinosaur. But I just I'm just enjoying it so much. How are you getting on with technology right now? Two decks and a mixer. <laughs> <laughs> This, um, is this ever going to change? No, hopefully not. <laughs> you said you actually said once the. Um, is this mic okay? 
um, that the medium for everybody who sets high values on good sound is turntables. Yeah. You still stand by that, that yes. principle? Yes, absolutely. And, and this feeling, you know, if you mix two records together, the energy you feel, and you hear in, in one, in the one, in your left headphone, uh, already the next song, and you imagine the mix now, and, and, and I mean, sync button, come on, you know. Uh, you know, I have this, I have this goosebumps when I'm mixing, you yeah. know. That is for me the a, a thrill, it's, it is, ah, it's the salt in the, in the soap, it is, it's, uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, there's somebody I mean, else. I see the DJs only on effects and working on the next break and waiting for the first kick. And, and that's also how the, how the crowd is reacting. The crowd is not listening anymore. They're just waiting for a break and then the effects and they jump on the first kick and then they wait again. <laughs> I mean, I work, the, I work it out. I want that people will dive yeah. with me in the, in the music for hours and get them, you know, in, in worlds. And, and, let them explode at one point and get him down again and so on. But it's, people um, must pay attention or, you know, to the music yeah. and not just to... What about, what about other technologies? Are you embracing other forms of technology in, in your life generally? Or you kind of, it's just really the DJing that you want to remain close to the yes. old form? Yeah, the DJing, yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to um, just ask you about uh, your life now, going forwards. You, you're going to go and live in London. Um, tell us about this as a, a new challenge in your life, a new, a new chapter in your life. It is, yes. I'm really looking forward to it. And I have a lot of friends living there. London is hot. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're talking about good parties okay. and good clubs <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and talented people. And yeah. And good restaurants, of course. Very much. And good art, and so yeah. Um, yeah, it's a new chapter. Yeah. And what's your, what's your? I mean, you're going to live there for all of the year round, or is this? No, I, there's no there. really a place where I live. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, I'm, I'm I'm staying here in the summertime, traveling a lot, and then I'm probably stay uh, two or three months in London, and then I'm staying living in Thailand. <coughs> in, January, February, March, and then start traveling again. Yeah, yeah. and um, your, you know, a lot is said about your, you know, your annual cleansing that you do of your body. Something mm -hmm. that's fascinated a lot of people, which a lot of DJs now around the world are following your lead on this. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this way of, of keeping your body clean and fresh, so that you can. You look so well right now. Um, the start <laughs> of the season. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm getting 50 next year. <laughs> And, um, well, I lived in India for a while, and uh, it was in the beginning of the 90s. I had a house in Goa, and I met this, this uh, spiritual guy, and he, uh, he uh, was uh, um, Ayurvedic uh, master. And so he was telling me of all about this panchakarma therapy and all this and that, and, and I just felt like I, I should try it out. And, since then, I'm doing it uh, you know, for a long time, every year, in October, and um, I, it helped me a lot to to say no. And uh, like three, four months in the in the year, I, I don't eat meat, no, no alcohol, no coffee, less sugar, and um, yes, it, for me, it's it's kind of tough, you know, if you look at your year and you th and you. And you realize that your your year is planned every day, yeah. every weekend, and and uh, so you have to set your priorities. What is really important, and you can't you cannot go full speed through the whole year. It's, it's not it's not possible. So you need your the balance um, in 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 your schedule. So I structured my year where I'm having you know quite time. Half speed, full speed. Full speed is coming, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, and uh, I give up smoking and then a lot of things and um, uh, doing sports and this and that. And I think uh, if you're living a light life, uh, it's always loud. My ears, you know, my, my ears are also ringing. I have a constantly tiny tooth since many years. Which is also you also have to deal with that, yeah. Yeah. 
um, as, 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 as much as fun as I have when I'm listening to music, but it's also very stressful. Yeah. 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 And especially when you play long sets. Yeah. And I'm afraid, but I'm, I can't put anything in my ears and I'm not enjoying it anymore. Yeah. So that's, uh, I have to live with that. And um, yeah, but I think it's, it's important, if, uh, if, especially if you're a performer, and you are, when you perform, you give everything mm -hmm. uh, that you also allow life needs also a quiet part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I realized this um, luckily already 20 years ago. And uh, yeah. yeah. How, how easy do you find it to say no and walk away from dangerous party situations on this island with your life being so structured, you know, is there... Do you ever, can you go off the rails with a, a day that's not planned, or you always keep days free in the summer for... Yes, I do. <laughs> Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes it's, you know, when the fire's on, the fire's on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is, uh, I mean, how do you, listen, we, we've seen you in some spectacular states behind the DJ booth. Mm -hmm. How do you... How do you keep it? How do you keep it on track? Don't ask me. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm just doing it. It's coming just... I think improvisation is my biggest, my biggest uh, art form. Yeah. Yeah. I have problems to playing tonight, actually, because express myself in 90 minutes is for me, is, is for me like a, a, yeah. a brain fucker. Yeah. This, uh, what should I play in 90 minutes? Oh my Sorry. God, 90 minutes. Yeah. I mean, this is for me nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So I have tracks which are like seven minutes, eight minutes. I like to play from the end to the beginning. And uh, in 90 minutes, then you really, I always think about then what should I play? What should I play in 90 minutes? But if you tell me play 10 hours, yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not thinking, I'm just playing the music I like. Yeah. Yeah. And that is uh, much more freedom. Yeah. And I see the DJs today, they come and have two hours and you know, come on, you know, there's no, no more building up, no more nice, uh, you know, some lovely moments. It's all about uh, yeah. peaking. Yeah, shocking, and, and yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you see the DJs playing two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours, and everyone would like to do the same and beat the other one, and beat the other one, yeah. and beat the other one. And, well, it's, uh, it's stressful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you like no boundaries, right? No boundaries. No boundaries. No boundaries. Who, are you, who are you sort of taking inspiration from right now? Are there... Are there some new guys that you're really hooked on that you that inspire you right now to to get better or to keep pushing yourself or DJing wise? Yeah. No, that's no one. <laughs> <laughs> you're at the top of your game. It's always the music yeah. which inspires me. The new Matt John album is a, is a really a, a bomb, like the Mini Loke album, the new one. I'm talking about Cocoon releases. And um, I'm I'm very music focused, yeah. So if I'm if I'm if I find a good record and I play it, and then I'm getting really more um, interest who's behind it, mm. yeah. And which the thing is that today a lot of producers they think they're also DJs, you know, and DJs becoming producers and DJs. Most of the DJs, they don't have the clue to play a piano or what it's music all about. They produce beats and effects. And, yeah. and, um, and this is also something I can see now. It's like when producers trying to be DJs, laptop, and then, hmm. Yeah. yeah and um, yeah, so it's for me difficult to follow. Uh, um, young DJs, because most of the time I play on parties. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, tonight I'm checking out Solomon and Maya Chinko. She, she, she impressed me last year in Miami with her set. And uh, yeah, if I have the time, I'm, I'm checking out also other DJs, but most of the time I don't have the time. Yeah. If, yeah, when I play till the end, <laughs> or I have to leave the place to go somewhere else. Yeah. But yes. Did you have some uh, 
some special locations for us this year for the after hours? I know you keep them secret, but uh, no, I think after hours at Salon Rosa at the Playa de Bossa, and we have another. We found, just found another place, really kind of old school Ibiza, really ah, tropical, yeah. nice after hour place. We let you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to that one. We look forward to that one. Um, I wanted to, uh, I know people are dying to ask some questions out here, so has anybody got a, a question for Sven here? Right at the back. Hi Sven, Jason. I've just always wondered, you're such a staunch vinyl supporter, have you ever had to compromise your set because you've not been able to get something on vinyl? Mm. Uh, that's the that's the the good part, because um, I um, only play music which is released on on vinyl, and this makes the huge difference to the other DJs who only play <laughs> files, MP3s. And um, so, well, maybe I'm, I'm missing here and there a track or a big track. I don't care because I have so many exclusive special tracks who are just released on vinyl, and this satisfies me. Next question, John. Hey, Sven. John Trulove, how are you doing? Hello. In my 25 years of clubbing, I have three very memorable dance floor moments, one of which was 14, I think, hours dancing to you in the Trezor car park after um, uh, Love Parade. Um, what are your memorable moments dancing to other DJs? I'm writing a book in the moment. <laughs> I'm writing a book about it in the moment. There are too many. Well, um, Love Parade 1999, I played in front of 1.2 million people. This was uh, the moment when I played the Knights of the Jaguar. And I started crying, honestly, wow. <laughs> because I was touched by the energy, what was in the air. And um, that was one of my, probably one of my biggest moments uh, in front of a mass of, uh, of such a huge, huge, huge crowd. Mm. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the craziest thing you've ever done whilst performing? <laughs> you know. <laughs> a few videos out there. I, I don't know. Well, so too many. Johannes? <laughs> <laughs> tell, us, tell us about this book. What's this book about? No, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> That's a shame. No, the book will come one day, probably. I want to tell people what DJs do for partying and, and how, how crazy this life is sometimes and how professional you have to be yeah. or if you're always being in time and always being crazy on time and, and that's, uh, uh, believe it or not, sometimes a hard work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> i just ask you, we'll come to Tosh in a moment, how, how relieved are you to kind of be out of the, the bricks and mortar club business, you know, with Cocoon, with the club and now, has that been a stressful part of your life, having to deal with these kind of businesses? And no, not at all. It was my dream, actually. And, and, and I think I was building with my partners one of the most beautiful clubs on earth, yeah, especially the architecture, the design, the, the sound, and also the two restaurants we had inside. But after eight years, it did not work out um, because um, of the location. The club was too big. The restaurants were... The performance was too high, and so. But after eight eight years, we had a you know we had to close it, and I'm actually I was, I was fine because now I can move to London. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's we had a good time there. Yeah, but I feel much more uh, now open for for new things. Yeah. And do you have are there many ambitions and goals that you've still got left as a musician, as an artist, as a are there things that you're aiming for as Sven Veith? Oh, well, of course, there are some, but uh, I always want to just keep on going with a good performance. You know, I think a good performance is for me, you know, this the most 
the biggest satisfaction yeah. when, I, I'm, when I make the people happy on the dance floor and they go home and have a smile in the face and say, bang, yeah. Yeah, what a party. Yeah. Simple as that. Great. Tosh? Well, I guess I don't have to introduce myself. Uh, right. Is it uh, somewhat bittersweet to watch so many of your kids kind of kids? grow up and move out of the house. Uh, I guess Marco and Rich and Luciano over the years. And then, then they, they you know, sort of jet out onto their own. And is it a bittersweet, bittersweet? Yeah, well, mm, bittersweet, bittersweet. Well, you know, they were joining Cocoon for many years. And um, as, you, as they were also, uh, as they are, very talented uh, artists, it was uh, for me sooner or later a question of time that they all go in their own ways. Yeah. But you know, it is um, of course uh, here and there. It's uh, kind of, I mean, Luciano is coming back uh, this year. He's playing for Cocoon, and of course Richie is playing, and Dice is playing as well. And so actually, I'm I'm okay, you know, and uh, and. It's also good for them uh, to see, um, I think, and to feel how hard it is to run a night. And, uh, and it's not like, yeah, open the doors, I play, and OK, I'm going, bye. So it, this is uh, uh, probably for them also a new experience. Yeah. Question? Marcello. <laughs> Hello, Sven. Nice Hello. to see you. Hello. Uh, being very honest, for, for how long do you see yourself doing what you do in exactly the same pace you do now? Who? I have to ask my son, <laughs> probably. <laughs> he will kick ass. No, I'm. The pace is quite difficult to say, as if as I'm, I'm, I'm going to balance myself as I do. Since all these years, I can't tell you exactly, but for long. <laughs> Another question? With the, uh, I mean, with the chaos that's around you and all of us, you know, it's, you're talking about how long can you sustain it. You know, we're, I'm 40 this year, you're 50 this year. It's, uh, it gets harder, right? It gets harder being around this, this whole crazy nightlife. How do you try and sort of stay sane within it? Well, as I said, you know, maybe you shouldn't uh, take everything what, 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 what happens uh, around you to, to, to important, you know. And um, actually, especially in Ibiza, you don't see, see me so much here going around and I'm not going clubbing here or um, you don't see me, you, see, you rarely see me on the beach or because Ibiza is so small and it's, it's so concentrated here with people and you have all the time people coming to you, want to talk to you, photo, guest list, or you have a CD on you and da -da 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 -da, all the time. Yeah? So I'm, I'm, I try to find my quiet time here in Ibiza, yeah? which is uh, manageable in my house, in my nice garden, and, and staying, you know, um, with my family. And, and I'm not um, impressed by what's going on yeah. here and there. And, and I have my friends, I have my family, and um, yeah, that's enough for me. Yeah. Did you ever visit the dance floors of Ibiza? Of course I did. Any, any recently that you've enjoyed? Or? Mm. That's where you came from, it's the, the spirit that's inside you, you know. I think the last time was the DC-10 a couple of years ago, mm. yeah. yeah. But, no, I'm dancing on the after hours. Yeah. In the sand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you look back at your career, um, from where we are now, what, do you, what would you say your sort of legacy has has been or your, your contribution to this, this scene? You know, you're a leader of the underground movement. You know, what would you say has been your, your sort of biggest contribution? 
Well, I'm, I'm happy that, um, that our music has reached that level that is um, happening on every continent now. And um, yes, the dance music I always believed in uh, is, um, is becoming like um, very important, but I hope for the right reasons. Yeah. And um, I think that um, Ibiza was always a place where um, the industry, maybe not, maybe not America, but here in general or South America, they were always uh, watching us what we were doing here because it always happened in Ibiza mm. at the beginning. And I see myself as a part of it, and um, yeah, and I also will, will, as I always did, I will be very true to myself and try to um, go in my path with my spiritual power I have with, for the music and my love I give. And um, yeah, I think that is and was my mission. Yeah. We've, been, we've been talking a lot this week at IMS about encouraging new artists, new talent, new people to work in, into this business to help keep the genre moving forwards. What's your, uh, you know, what would you say to people to inspire them to, to get into this game? You know, what would you say to people who want to get into this game? Don't do it. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it is for me difficult to uh, to give advice now, you know, because it is so, it is such a, a new, it's a new world, how people consuming music, how, how people messaging, how people talk to each other, and so on, and, and our scene is also now so uh, fast living, yeah. You can be a pop star and DJ pop star in two years and, and so on. I mean, for me, it's like, at, and, 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 and I, I like to support, you know, artists and um, I like to pay for the music I, I play. And um, uh, this is something I think it still has to change and to make this young people aware that the, the artists, you know, they, they also invest time and, and energy into that, what they do. Why should it be for free? Yeah. Yeah. We had this conversation together. And yeah, well, respect, respect to the, to the artists and to the music. And, and if, you are, if you are talented and you will make your way. Yeah. You but, yeah. Do you see any connection between what you do and Avicii and these kinds of people? Do you, do you see them as being in any way connected to what you're doing? I was a pop star, 86, 87, and I know what it's like uh, when the industry is using you. Yeah, and you are much too young to make your own decisions. You have managers suddenly around you have business people and they're telling you what to do. So sometimes I feel sorry for them, you know. But I don't have any connection in terms of, you know, what we do, yeah. what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I'd just like to say you've been an absolute pleasure to be around for as long as I've known you and you're a true inspiration to me and I think to everybody in this room. So. Let's get you up to Dolt Villa and have the party of our lives tonight. Yes. Thank you.